Hi everyone. On May 3rd, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of a wonderful couple, a pair of married saints. They are the reader Timothy and his wife Mavra. Now, Timothy and Mavra had only been married about 20 days when great afflictions were to beset them. But we must understand, first of all, that Timothy, who was a reader in the church, had a profound and wonderful love for the Holy Scriptures and for spiritual books. He knew them inside out. And in fact, people would gather around him in the evenings as he would read the Scriptures to them and expound upon them. So they were very, very important to him. His wife, Mavra, was no less devout a personage than Timothy and made for a wonderful companion for the young reader. Now, as I had mentioned, after only 20 days, Timothy was called to account by a man named Arianos, who was the provincial governor uh, in the debate under, at that time, the rulings of the treacherous emperor Diocletian. Now, Arianos had come to understand that Timothy was doing a lot of proselytization and missionary work and expounding the Christian scriptures in a very public manner, and he was not happy about it. And so he asked Timothy, to stop doing this. And Timothy said, well, if a man is unwilling to give up his children for reasons such as this, why should I give up my spiritual children, which are my love and my passion and the most important thing in my life, especially to someone who is as unworthy as you are. Well, as you can imagine, this did not sit well with Arianos. And so he brought in Timothy's wife, Mavra, and tried to persuade her to use her feminine charms on her husband in order to persuade him to give way and obey the orders that Arianos demanded of Timothy. Well, Mavros was having none of this, and instead she began to encourage Timothy to remain firm, to remain strong. Timothy, of course, again refused, and so they took him and drove a bolt through each of his ears, so much that the pain was so great that it almost drove the eyes out of his head. They hung him upside down, and Mavra was not exempt from this either because she was taken and her fingers cut off, and then she was immersed in a boiling cauldron, which by the grace of God did not harm her at all. Eventually they were both taken out and shown the crosses by which they were to be crucified on. Each of them piously venerated those crosses that were to serve as the instruments of their death, and they were indeed crucified, facing one another, in which they remained in that state for nine long days before giving up their souls. The Synaxarian speaks of the fact that they each saw visions of angels during this time, which encouraged them to remain steadfast, and they both knew that by undergoing this period of trial, the heavenly mansions were going to be open to them. There was a famous church on the Isle of Zakynthos dedicated to St. Mavra, and it includes today a miraculous icon that has worked healings and miracles for many people for many, many years. And even though the church had been destroyed several times and I think rebuilt even in the 1800s, that icon still exists. And if you look carefully, you can even find it online. But what is more important, I think, in this story, 
aside from the couple that was so, so graced by our Lord Jesus Christ that their love transformed one another and went straight to heaven, is the idea of an office in the church. Now, of course, in this case, uh, Timothy was a reader. And many times in the church, we see readers that are ordained and they, they do their duties diligently. And in some cases, they don't. But we see from the example of Timothy exactly how seriously even the lowest degree of the priesthood, which is that of reader, should be taken in the church. Because Timothy was someone who was in love with the scriptures, could expound on them, could, could speak for hours about them, could not be without them for one minute. And no doubt his wife, who was devoted to him, also shared that same enthusiasm, which is shown by the fact that she encouraged him in his martyrdom because of his very reluctance to give up these books for the sake of anyone. So we see that everything in the church has a purpose, everything has an importance, and we can't for one minute try to lessen the importance of any of these things even the smallest thing having to do with the church of God is something great and magnificent in the eyes of our Lord. Let us not forget that as we ponder on this wondrous story of this young married couple who now adorn our Lord.